Hi. Hi, Lindsay. So nice to see you this morning. So nice to see you. You look so lit up. It looks like you're actually sitting in a rainbow with all of these colors behind you. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad vibrating colors for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking them in. I feel very bland and drab now all of a sudden without, uh, without <laughs> color behind me. I can tell I need some art behind me. <laughs> Well, it's such a treat. Um, we met in person just recently, and I was so excited to have you here doing a shift series, especially because I wanted to bring a little bit of your incredible energy and light and vitality and share it with this tribe. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited, too. <laughs> yeah. So tell, tell us just a little bit about who you are and the work that you're doing. We can tell you're creative by all these goodies behind you. Tell us a little bit what that is. I am, my name is Desiree East, and I am a creativity coach. So what that means is I teach you how to be, how to be artistic and bring that creative muse that might be sleeping inside in your heart, your mind, your soul, just kind of bring them out to play. I love it. And um, so more than art making, it's kind of like I, my friends and family, since I started doing this, they're like, you're a life coach, but you, you teach people art, but you're a life coach. So I'm kind of like a life coach disguised as an artist. I love it. If you will, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's kind of my, um, my, my, the heart of my work is just kind of helping people bring out that creative side um, that's inside of them. Every, I think everybody's an artist, and just sometimes we don't have the time in our daily lives to tap into that. So... That's my job, is to ask your muse to come out and play. <laughs> That's wonderful. So tell me how you came to the place in your life where you're doing this expressive, creative work. Well, um, by trade, I, I'm a landscape designer. So I, I specialize in sustainable landscape designs. And how I got into that work was because I had an art background and I have a love or Mother Nature. So I, I went to school for environmental studies, and throughout that whole time, I also took studio art studies. And so I met my husband, who's a plant nerd. He's a horticulturalist, and um, he he started you know working on people's yards. And he said, "Gosh, you're such a good artist. Can you and you know your plants? Can you help me with design work?" So that's how that fell into my lap. So we we had our design business. We started in 2001. And in 2008, when the market was booming, we were busy. We were living like kings. We had we bought our first house, flipped it, bought our second house. We're in the middle of fixing it, and then here comes the big bubble that bursts. Yeah. And um, so, because our landscape and design business was directly tied to the housing market, when the Great Recession happened in 2009, our business kind of crashed alongside with it. So. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were like struggling to kind of keep afloat. Yeah. And um, to make a long story short, we had to walk away from our home, unfortunately. And uh, also, you know, we had to downsize. We had to downsize everything. We sold nearly half of our possessions. We had to move back in with my parents. So that was a big, you know, like ego. Yeah. Kicking the ego. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, but it was, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because it really made us realize how, um, like, it really, we hit rock bottom, but it made us realize how significant it is to follow your purpose in life. It, we really started asking ourselves, yes. you know, the, those kind of questions, like, okay, what are we really here to do? What are, why are we really here? Yeah. Because money isn't everything, obviously. Yeah. It can you know, all of that stuff got pulled out from under us. Right. And it's like, now what? Right. You know, you got your, got your clothes on your back and, you know, the basic needs, got food, you had shelter, but, like, yep. that's it. You just had the basics. So it really made us open our eyes. And at that point, um, my husband both loved to travel and surf. That's what we do. And we said, you know what, let's, let's save up for two years. Let's just start over, save up, let's take a sabbatical and live in Bali. So we had this crazy idea to save up money and, um, and we planned to try and live in Bali for a year. 
we ended up staying for about five to six months. Wonderful. And our family and friends thought we were crazy. They were like, oh my gosh, you guys are crazy. You just went through foreclosure and um, business is like obviously not doing well. Like no business was at that point. And we were like, how are you going to, how are you going to pull this off? And we did it. We pulled it off somehow. I don't know how, <laughs> but we saved the money. We put everything in storage and we took off for Bali and it was life changing. So it was, it was like, it's very healing. And um, at that point, um, in 2009, I, I forget what year I started my blog. I started mm-hmm. an art, travel, and photo blog just because. It yep. wasn't even a business. Yep. My intention was never to have an online business. Yeah. But I started this blog, and I started um, creating artwork for myself. Yes. I started taking photography again and started art journaling again. All of these things that um, I know about art, I, I've always had that yearning to do that, and I put it on the back burner yeah. because of life and yep. because of running a business. And, you know, the things that you enjoy the most sometimes you just put aside yep. because of life. You know, you get busy. So, um, anyways, I started this blog, and, and while we were in Bali, um, I started connecting with people online and you know, just re- being really inspired by ev- what everyone else is doing on- online. Yeah. And I met other artists and other travelers, and I said, gosh, this is so much fun. How can I share, continue sharing my passion for photography and art making with other people? And that's where I, I found out about creativity coaching. So I decided to get my certification, and I love it. It's so great. So tell us a little bit what that process is like. How does a person find you, and what are they typically seeking, and what process do you walk them through? So um, with the creativity coaching, what I love about it the most is, for me, while I was going through you know, all of that messy stuff that I was going through, it, I found that creating artwork was very healing for me. I didn't know it at the moment until... I like step back and said, wow, this, is, this has really helped me get through some tough times. And so um, when someone finds me, if they come across my website and they read my blog posts and look at my photography and my artwork, the thing that they would get from me is they would know that I would help them do the same. So really tapping in to that creative intuition And um, like I said before, I had never really made art making for myself. I put that on the back burner for years. And once I started tapping into that creative wisdom again, it really allowed me to open up my eyes to the possibilities of what the world could offer to me and what I could offer to the world. And um, when you you exercise your right brain, that's where the creative side Besides, it really helps you tap into your intuition. Yes. And that is something sometimes we forget to use on a daily basis because we live in such a left brain yep. world. Yep. You know, the to do lists, yep. the deadlines, the logical, analytical type of things, which we need to survive. Sure. You know, I'm not saying left brain is bad. I really love the idea of holistic, holistic brain. Wellness, yes. both sides. Yes, absolutely. So, this is such an important topic when I think about how we are trying to find ways to overcome whatever challenge. So, you you ended up at this rock bottom, and you found that by trusting your inner guides and by expressing yourself, you were able to align yourself to your sole purpose, and now bring this work forward for other women. If someone is at a point where they're at rock bottom and they're struggling either with a health issue or another challenge, you know, like a financial challenge or a heart break, um, how could they go about working with you to maybe begin to tap into this intuition and to work this right brain side that will open them up to transformation and to positive change? Um, some of the things that I like to do, if anyone would like to work with me, I... I'm a huge advocate for journaling. Yes. So that's the first thing. Just getting it all out on paper. You can burn it later if you want to. <laughs> you don't need to. Or if you keep it. 
Yeah. And so I'm a huge advocate for, for journaling. And, and not only that, just sometimes, you know, if something is inspiring that calls to you, like an affirmation, making it nice and pretty so you can, you know, open your journal up and look at it. Yes. And uh, painting is huge. Yes. I know um, that a lot of people are afraid to paint if they are not artists. And yep. I teach them. That would be me. <laughs> behind you. Tell us what these things are and where they emerged and a little bit of the process that goes into them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I have, um, there we go. You're so beautiful. I, thanks. I have a couple of mandala paintings um, here and uh, that's one of my courses is uh, mandala meditation. Okay. It's a three week painting program. And I teach you all the, you know, working on the black, white canvas and building the layers and you set intentions every week and we meditate wow. on those intentions every week. And then we end, there's a final week, it's a bonus week. So I'll, I'll leave that as a, as a surprise, but it's okay. connecting with nature. It has something to do with connecting with nature. And then um, I have a couple of owl paintings, just as a reminder of yeah. the wisdom yeah. that we all have. And, um, Zen love is something that um, that was part of a painting marathon, and that was just the final message that came to my mind, Beautiful. my creative wisdom that spoke to me was Zen love. Because at that point, when I was doing the paintings, I was really trying to look for focus yep. in my life, and those words came up. And then I have a couple of uh, vision boards, and so I do teach a work workshop as well called Vision Board Dream. And basically, uh, I have one for my health, and then I have one for um, my business. Nice. So uh, that's a lot of fun, too, you know, trying to visualize what it is that you want to create in your life, getting those dreams down in images and words and really, like, I don't want to say hammering them in, but, like, yeah. just really praying on those uh, yeah. affirmations and then taking action. So, yeah. That's what I help with, the coaching part. Not just making, not just pacing pictures, but actually helping you take those steps to make those dreams realized in your life. I just love it. I love it, love it. Incorporates all these values that I think are so important as we find ourselves on a transformational journey about trusting that it's inside of us and that we're good enough and that we don't need to judge and that activating that creative side of the brain taps us into our inner knowing and our voice. I'm so excited to have been able to talk with you today. I want to make sure that people know that they can find you at DesireEast.com and I'll make sure to put the link below so um, 
go find Desiree there. Look for these two courses. It sounds like the mandala meditations is something that we'll be able to find around the time of the solstice, which seems like the perfect, perfect time to be doing it. Um, and also follow Desiree on Facebook and social media. She's a bright, bright light and lots of high vibration there. So I'm excited people are going to come uh, experience a little bit of your light. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so before we close, I always like to ask the question, if there was just one thing that someone could do, if either they're feeling stuck or maybe they've hit that proverbial rock bottom in some way or maybe coming back from illness um, and they were ready to bring in some transformation in their lives and there was just one thing that you would recommend that they could do, what would that one thing be? As a creativity coach, if I was going to give you one creative tip that you could do, I would say it's the simplest thing you can do. And I tell this to everybody. There's like free information right here. And I've told this to, you know, um, people that are going through either health issues or business issues. Whatever it is, is just this one thing. Doodle. Doodle. That's unexpected. Doodle. Tell me. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. So this is what you want to do, though. There's some guidelines. So um, you could doodle with whatever you have in front of you. A pen, crayon, on a napkin, on a scrap piece of paper, in your journal. And basically, what what you I like you to do is to journal for a minimum of five to ten minutes. So a minimum. So at okay. least five. Let's say at least five minutes, because you want your right brain to kind of kick in and activate. And so the reason why I like to, to um, suggest a doodling because you don't need to artist, quote unquote, even though we are, we are all artists, um, and you just basically use um, simple shapes, lines, simple forms, or whatever comes to mind, and while you're doodling, um, it really allows your your left brain to kind of take a break from all the, judge the judgment, the, the criticizing, the analytical thoughts, you know, it kind of gives that brain a rest, because we use that part of our brain way too much. Absolutely. And then, so, when you start doodling, after the five to ten minute mark, sometimes people go longer, which is fantastic if you can go longer and fill up the entire page. I highly suggest that. Once you take over to the right brain, it's very meditative. Yeah. It's very meditative, and you can just keep going forever. It really brings a sense of peace and calm in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. And it's just very grounding, and it really brings you to the present moment. Yep. And when you're in the present moment, moment that is where love-based truths reside. I love it. So it's important to recognize that. I don't think that, you know, sometimes we don't recognize that, mm -hmm. and I, I want you to recognize that when you're doodling. So it's a very simple, a very simple exercise, but it could be very powerful to bring that that peace of mind that sometimes so much of us crave. I uh, love it. Anyone can doodle. Grant yourself permission to doodle and look what it will unlock in your life. Thank you so much for sharing your bright light and your wisdom with us. It's been such a treat. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. Thank it's you. Been awesome. Let's, okay. let's do tea again soon. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Take care. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye.